Okay. Um, I was reading Baba Smurli yesterday, Smurli today, and it uh, just took me to a lot of um, memory lane um, to those times when uh, spending time with seniors and especially spending time in Madhuban. I remember the first time I went to Madhuban was um, was about, uh, I think about nine years old or 10 years old. And uh, back then there was, I think, uh, a little few, I, I, I feel the crowd could have been less, but at that time, seeing that many people, it felt like a lot. But now in this recent years, after what, more than 30 years, uh, now going to Madhuban and seeing that many souls, and now we really feel yes, this is this is a lot compared to what we used to see in in the eighties and nineties. So I first before we headed to the Merle, just wanted to <clears throat> explain certain um, aspects that Baba um, mentioned in the Merle. You would uh, always hear this chatrat bird that Baba would always um, mention in the Murli. What do you think? Is it a real bird or is it just like some mystical bird? I think it is there. Okay, so one person is saying real. Anyone else? Yeah, so I googled and I, I could find it. It is actually a real bird, actually. And yeah. uh, um, that bird, actually, I wanted to just quickly show you how that bird looks like. Drink, drink only rainwater. Yes. It's actually a real bird. And uh, this is how the bird looks like. Can you see this? Yes. So the English name for this bird is um, peed cuckoo. Um, actually, it's peed crest cuckoo. So cuckoo is the family, the type of bird. And so this is the bird, Chatrak. Uh, it's actually, Chatrak is actually the Hindi uh, name for this bird. And this is the English name. And this is how it is. Um, the bird is that this is a very, very special bird. This is the only bird in the bird um, clan, the bird family, that only drinks water drop by drop from the rain. Like other birds, you know, when they're thirsty, they would go and drink from the river, from the pond, um, from the lake. But this is the only bird. It will never go and drink any other wa uh, water sources. And in fact, it will um, keep the beak open like this. And it will drink drop by drop when the, when the rain comes. Even if this bird is very thirsty, it will not go and drink any other sources any other water source so it will it, uh, it will call and call for the rain until the rain comes and this bird actually has the ability to live without water for many days that is the the genetic fam the, the genetic um capa capability of this word is that when it drinks it stores the water so it can last without water for many days actually so this was what baba was actually referring to in the murli and um, another one um picture i wanted to show you uh, for those who um have have not been to um madhuban probably for those who have not been to madhuban um, just want to quickly show you something. Mm. It's this image. Uh, just, okay. Okay. 
So this, um, have any of you, have, have you seen the diamond hall in Madhuban? Yes, I, I have seen. You have seen, okay. Well, I just want to- Yeah, me too, those... yeah, me too. Mm. Okay, so for those um, who have not seen, I have something that I want to show you because um, it's quite interesting. When you see, you will know. What? Because it has a lot of reference to what Baba said today. So let me, okay, so here it is. So, so this is, do you see this picture? So the capacity of this, this is the diamond hole and the capacity of this diamond hole can sit about 30 to 35,000 people that's only in this hall that you see, but then there are, you know, outside of this hall, they put up a tent in, in, in the field, in a, in a grass field, and then there's just another few thousands are sitting there. And, um, and in this hall, if you can imagine, you're sitting among this 35,000 people, There'll be so many people you can hear coughing, sneezing, or talking, or children crying. And there's sometimes, you know, if it is during summertime, there's heat. So you can imagine that there's so many things that will happen in the surrounding. And you will have to sit and bear with everything. But the one beauty thing is that everyone anxiously you know we'll be meditating together in this one big hall and everyone are meditating just invoking baba baba now it's time for you to come you know and of course at that time in Dadi Gulzar's body but now of course Dadi Gulzar left body but the moment baba or um the moment baba enters Dadi Gulzar every one of us feel Baba's energy, which a human soul will never be able to um, spread such an intense energy to a huge hall. Everyone present there will be able to feel Baba. And you know, this is, you know, okay, Baba's here. Pin, drop, silence. Even though, yes, later you will hear sounds, people, you know, coughing or sneezing or just people talking, but none of that actually, none of that is disturbing you at that time. It's like your whole surrounding has gone out of focus for you. You are only looking at Baba and you're only um, paying attention to what Baba is saying. Um, this has been my lifetime experience. And for, for those of you who've been to Madhuban, you know what that feels also. That now when you look, sitting amidst of this many people, and of course the number is increased by the year with so many people are coming. But Baba, only Baba and no other human soul has that power to tackle this many thousands of mind to focus at that one time. Only Baba has that power. And that is why Baba was saying in the beginning of the Murli, Baba was saying that you have become merged in Baba's love. That is why you don't feel um, your surroundings, even though you are hearing everything, but yet none of it matters to you, none of that. Uh, feels more important you're more interested to know you want you want to feel Baba you want to connect with Baba and you want to hear what Baba says and so that is why Baba says that uh, while celebrating a meeting you are free from obstacles and um, you become uh, merged in Baba's company so Baba started off with just um, appreciating the children's love appreciating, you know, because people from all over the world, they would come. 
Some of them would take days, you know, if they're not taking flights, if they're just taking trains or cars and they're coming from a different country also, it would take them days to arrive. And Baba appreciates everyone's effort and Baba appreciates everyone's love. And so then Baba is giving that return. Baba is telling, you know, uh, that is you are merged in Baba's love and that's all that Baba sees. And so that was the two things which I wanted to um, show you before we, so you, you can understand what Baba is starting off with. And then after that, Baba is um, explaining to us, how can we increase blessings? And uh, in every paragraph, Baba spoke about different aspects, but I want to connect the dot uh, what did Baba uh, say? What did Baba said in every paragraph and how, and how these uh, points are so interconnected with each other? And so let me, I'm actually, um, I used to, whenever I would teach from the Saito Center, I would sit in downstairs in the hall, and then there are people meditating downstairs, so I'm sitting up in the room. We have a, a, an office come, Baba's room upstairs. So I want to, uh, one thing that I wanted to um, emphasize very heavily to everyone, one aspect about karma, which we need to remember because it's very much connected with also in today's morning. So one aspect of karma I need to know is that karma equals to pain. Can you see? Is this uh, can you see this well? Yes. Okay. Yes. But karma is not equivalent to suffering. This is one thing, one equation that's very important for me to understand. When I'm settling an account, and, and I'm talking about, you know, we're discussing about negative karma. We're not discussing about positive karma because positive karma definitely we're going to be so happy we're going to experience happiness we're going to experience benefit so it's given but i'm talking about setting the negative accounts settlement of negative account means some form of pain whether it's an emotional pain or whether it's a physical pain but that is what karma is equivalent to but karma does not mean that I have to suffer. Now, pain is what I experience at that moment, at that given moment when I'm going through something. But when I keep thinking about it again and again, I keep uh, revisiting to that, uh, what happened, uh, what they said, example, that scene, I keep again and again playing in my mind. So then what happened is I am now converting the pain into suffering. Suffering, it is self-created. Pain is what I'm settling because of a karmic depth. Okay, so suffering, I can use another word, which is labor. Labor means I have to work hard. It's a hard work. It's a hard journey that I'm going through. Okay, so in this Murli, Baba actually... Um, Baba actually mentioned that blessings, blessings will save, there's one word actually Baba used. Something like when we have Baba. blessings, we don't have to labor, labor much. Yeah, the speciality of a blessing is that the one who receives the blessing never have to labor. So Baba says, blessing cancels out labor. Okay. When I so so now the question is, how do I earn the blessing, and how do I keep earning? multiply the blessing in my life and who is giving blessing and uh, how is the blessing earned okay because baba says when the soul is in a state that is very stable then whatever the soul does it doesn't have to go through labor because 
labor comes when I have many choices and I'm not sure which is the right one. So I keep trying, I keep trying, I keep trying, I keep trying. And then finally, maybe yes, I would hit the target. But what if I can hit the target directly without making all these different mistakes, different, different wrong choices? So that is blessing, is that there is an accuracy in the choice that I make. There is that rationality or is that power to discern is so accurate that what I do, what I speak, what I think, it's the target. So I'm not moving around the bush. So that is what it means, labor, okay? So now that you have this idea, so now let's go into the, the model. Okay. So um, as I said, that the, there are a few pointers that Baba mentioned in each of these paragraphs and each of these pointers um, they create a whole big picture. You can summarize this whole Murli in just four pointers. One, Baba spoke about being equal, equal to Baba. And I'll explain what all of these means. And then after that, Baba spoke about being spiritually alive. Okay. And then the third point, uh, Baba spoke about the tree, which is tree means, it means one is creation. We're gonna just write here as, okay, creation. And another one is sustenance, okay. And then the second, the last point uh, is, let's see, okay. These are all interconnected. This summarizes the entire Merlin. So being equal to Baba, first understanding that idea, is that what does Baba mean by, e by being equal to Baba? So being equal to Baba is that the soul, so Baba in fact actually did state that um, in one of the lines here, I just want to quote exactly what Baba said so that we can then move from there. Okay, so being equal, see when I when I'm looking for it, but then it's not coming. <laughs> okay. So Baba says here that the blessing of being equal is, may you be full of all powers. And of course, then Baba was um, talking about the task, the form, the name, and um, in terms of powers. So the idea of what Baba is saying, being equal to Baba, is that I become a reflection of my parent. What I learned from my parent people are able to see it through my life. Like example, as your, your children, right? If, uh, if your children make a mistake, what does the society say? Bad parenting, <laughs> right? They're gonna blame the parents. Whatever the, the children perform, whether it's at work, whether it's in school, the finger pointing will go to parents. So that means the parents didn't bring them up well. And also if they do very well, if their behavior is good, they're excelling in, in whatever areas. Also, the credit goes to parents. They say, you know, um, they have good parents. The parents have taught them well. So in that sense, that what have I learned from Baba? What am I embodying, following um, Baba? Baba says in terms of powers. As souls, we know powers are DNA. That's within all of us, the eight powers are the DNA of the soul, but then we don't exhibit it. We don't use it. We don't show it throughout our life. Maybe certain powers could be stronger, but then all the other powers could be weaker. Maybe some of us could have more courage, but then we could be lacking in discerning or we could be lacking in um, 
power to withdraw, meaning detach, meaning patience. And so how can I um, embody all these powers and be able to use it at the right time? So that is in terms of learning from Baba, um, being powerful in that sense. And then in terms of virtues, Baba has a lot of virtues, but so do I. When I'm in connection with Baba, a lot of these sanskaras being virtuous, these sanskaras become very much alive within me. We all have the track. The virtues are a, a, a track subconsciously within all of us, which is in the sanskaras. But somebody has to kindle it out. Someone has to bring that out in me. And Baba does that. So these are ways, you know, being equal to Baba means that I become a good representation of my parent. And then when people see me, then they would say, yes, um, you know, I've learned well and um, I am a good example, a spiritual example to many others. So that is what it means to be equal to Baba. And when I'm able to do that in my life, of course, it is a step-by-step -step journey. Nothing is achieved overnight, but there has to be a start. And then there has to be some consistency to be able to see the result. So when I'm able to do that, then what? this is what Baba means by being spiritually alive. I will go all of this um, in the in the Murli, but I'm just telling you how all of these are so interconnected with each other. So when I am very consistent in my efforts, then I am more and more spiritually alive. And Baba spoke about you know being in a coma stage, which, which we will come back soon. Spiritually alive. And when I am very much spiritually alive, what happens is one is um, I am gaining a lot of experience, but also a lot of wisdom. And so there is so much for me to share. And there is so much for me to, um, one is leading through sharing Baba's Gyan, but another one is leading through being an example. Okay. And then Baba spoke about the tree, right? The tree that uh, we will. We will soon later, what, we will see what is Baba meant by the tree. It is so depth, there's so much depth that Baba has given to this tree. In fact, those who are, those of you who are giving the course, you know, such a depth that Baba has given to what Kalpa tree is. And then Baba says that when you, when you sustain souls, through your vibration, through your life, through your vibration, what happened is you are giving hope to souls. You are showing them the way. You are um, helping them to connect with Baba. Of course, we'll be in their own term, but then you, you are bringing them closer to God. You are bringing them closer to um, the identity or the relationship with God. And by doing so, um, you will earn a lot of blessings you will earn appreciation blessings from the heart from many others that you have served. And so this then finally what Baba meant by increasing the stock of blessings. Now, there is three ways how we actually receive blessings. One, of course, from Baba. Two, from others. Three, from the self. It's very important also from the self. Okay, so now this, now I, I will um, go about and explaining each of these points. But until here, it is it clear? Yes? Okay. Yes. Rekha Ben is showing a thumbs up. So I'll take it as that is, she is representing the class online right now. So she's thumbs up means clear, means okay, good to go. Okay, so now let's go on to um, Baba Samali. So the first thing, remember we spoke about uh, being equal to Baba. So what does Baba meant by being equal to Baba? Baba mentioned in terms of form. What is our form? 
soul huh? as a light one, and baba is light. also light okay and what type of soul divine divine yes. is definitely given baba yes. especially meant light. master embodiment of powers baba is powerful i am master powerful so as baba's child i am also <laughs> powerful soul so my form is yes i am a being a spirit but not just an ordinary stressful spirit but i'm actually a very powerful spirit okay so i'm going to write in short it's a master embodiment of powers map okay that's our map and then baba is talking about what is our name now this is not a physical name per se but it's actually a role right in, in, the beauty part about all of us is that the names that we all um, have it has a meaning right they come in what's the meaning of your name do you know yeah mine is, is a line mean? it's a line infinite a line? line infinite, infinite on both sides okay yeah. okay so all of us has a a unique meaning behind our name and that unique meaning represents about our character whether we realize it or not it is a character or a personality trait that we have and so now here baba is saying what is my spiritual name what is my um character the personality that i carry is i'm a person just the way baba always um um have the partner to benefit everyone baba is always benefiting everyone and so baba says just like my parent i also am a benefactor and baba went on saying world benefactor because we are not just benefacting souls whether it's a human soul or an animal soul but we are benefacting even nature mother nature elements five elements just through our vibrations and so that is why baba is not just talking about benefactor of souls but literally everything nature five elements souls that's why baba put there is world benefactor that is the the, the characteristic that we carry um the ability that we carry in fact all of us have this ability <laughs> because it's impossible that we belong to baba and not have this ability but maybe not many of us have actually brushed on it worked on it so we but for sure 200% i can say with full guarantee that each and every one of you there in zoom right now definitely you have benefited someone or another in your life do you agree so nasbon says my name means light well then i guess you are double light <laughs> you are light here and you are light in your in this body okay do all of you agree that you have benefited someone or another in your life do you feel so yes 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 how about the others not sure you have helped someone or another in your life correct i don't think you can say no i i don't feel any of you will say no <laughs> because you definitely have helped someone or another in your life so that is like bringing benefit to someone and now baba is talking about looking at the world at large and bringing more and more benefits to not just one or two soul or few souls in our life but whomever i meet and the whole world um in 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 general and so then that's the name now the third baba is talking about in terms of virtues virtues 
okay? And then Bhav is talking about the task. So all of us just have one task. And what is that one task? We're not destroying anyone's weaknesses. <laughs> that is not in our hand for sure. Uh, that's, Baba's, that's Baba's job. But we are definitely working with our weaknesses. And so we know what it feels like to um, face our inner demons. You know, we always say inner demons. You know what inner demons means? that voice, that sanskaras, that certain habits, that uh, it still comes back to us no matter how much I, I feel I've worked, but those things are still alive. So this is like inner demons that I'm referring to. And so working with my inner demons, I know what it feels like and I know what are the steps I had to take. And so I become very well experienced in that. And my experience, um, I can share with someone else who is working with a similar demons in themselves. Right? They are also working on a similar habit in themselves. So I can share my experience with them. And I can say what worked for me. It's like you know, sharing stories of success. So then what happens is by telling them, they get an idea. Then they, they get like a solution and then they try on. And then, oh yeah, it works for me also. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for giving me motivation. So my task here right now, Baba says, is the task of establishment. But what is I'm establishing in a golden age that is that is coming later. But right now, this instance, how am I helping in Baba's task of establishment is that me um, helping others to recognize and to um, awaken the, the, the beauty in every soul. That is definitely I am with Baba, right? We are, that is why Baba keeps telling about being a good example. Baba keeps talking about giving good wishes because the world needs it right now. The world, you know, uh, according to statistics, last year, the depression rate in the world skyrocketed more than what the world experienced in the last 60 years. It was the highest rate. And the, the last time where they, they, they found that increase in the depression rate was during the war. But that's what, what, 50 years, 60 years before. And after all that time, last year, just within one year, the rate increased. The mental illness rate increased. And that is why Baba is saying the need for hope, giving hope, the need for such powerful positive vibration is so much now, needed more now than at any other time. That is my task with Baba. Right? Everything else, don't worry. Baba will take care. I just give Baba a hand in this. Good enough. Right? So this is the idea of what Baba means, that being equal. Acha. Now, let's go to the idea of being spiritually alive. And that is very, very beautiful what Baba mentioned. Baba said, so imagine this is your, the time that you had taken birth, spiritual birth, you know, the time when you got this knowledge, you've taken a spiritual birth and the time of death, when I leave this body, okay? When I leave this body. So the time when I took my spiritual birth into the time that I'm going through, you know, process of death. Baba says that it doesn't matter about how many years this is. What matters is we are not adding we are not talking about how many years it is, but what we are adding is how much quality I'm adding to the years. OK, 
Okay. And so here, Baba is talking about um, ha to have a long life, meaning to have a long lifespan. So how can I have a long lifespan? Baba says by following the method that Baba has shown. Because actually what is, if you really see, what is Shreemad? Shreemad are methods. You know, we say directions, but then the word directions, it seems as if more like an order. And we have received so many orders from so many people in our life. We go to school, we get orders from our teachers. We get orders from parents. Then we get orders. We keep being told. Uh, you have to do this, you have to do this. So that's why I don't like to use the word directions or order um, from Baba, even though you may hear it in the Murli, but let's give another name to it. So it has a very soft feeling um, to what we are experiencing in life. We can say Srimad can be a method or can be a solution, a way that Baba is showing. And so it may not necessarily be that what Baba is showing is something that I've been doing or something that maybe uh, would come easy for me. But definitely Baba says, it is the right choice. It's the right solution. Try it and then see how it works. So uh, this is like methods, solutions that Baba is giving us. And it's not just um, a physical method, a physical approach, but also how to think. Baba is also giving a solution for our thoughts. Baba is also giving solutions for how we speak and how we act. So these are what Srimad really means. And if I follow the right solution, then my state of mind is not going to go through so much fluctuation. Remember I said about working with inner demons, facing my inner demons. I need to know how to do it. I need to know the right method, but I also need power to be able to do that. And so this is what Baba says, if I'm on the right track, then my state of mind will be a little more consistent. I'm not gonna always go up and down, up and down to the extremes. Yes, sometimes we go up and down, but not to hit rock bottom, you, you know, uh, bouncing back quickly when I am facing something, let me not sit and suffer too long. Let me come out of it quickly. Okay, I went through it. This happened, this happened. Let me bounce back quickly. Baba says, this is what it means to live long, to live without too much suffering. You know, especially, I was talking about emotional suffering, which definitely then uh, takes a toll on the body but more so emotional suffering, which is what Baba says. If I, am, if I am choosing the right method, and if I follow the method Baba is showing, then Baba says, yes, that'll be a long life. And then Baba is also then sharing, of course, then the opposite is if I'm not following um, the solutions or the methods that Baba is um, showing, and I go about, yes, making my own choices, which, it's completely up to me. But then sometimes I do make choices out of my own uh, weaknesses. I do, I do make uh, choices out of my, um, you know, very, very subtle self motives out of these sanskaras that I'm working with, these weaknesses that's within me. So then I will then have to um, encounter the results. I will have to face the results. Sometimes I could be proud of what I did. Other times I could be regretting what I did. So then, then what happens? The, the mind is fluctuating between feeling happy and then feeling upset, feeling joyful, peaceful, loving, and then feeling distressed and disappointed and angry. So then Baba says that is like a, a short lifespan. Uh, and, and, and also Baba was giving the idea that free from obstacles, you've heard the word, right? Free from obstacles. Having a long life means being free from obstacles. Now let's define what this obstacle means. Um, Baba is not talking that challenges will not come your way. Karma means settlement has to happen. 
what I have done, I don't have to face it. Test papers will come, that's given. But free from obstacles means, remember the equation that I gave before, you experience pain, but you don't have to suffer. Body example, body will go through some pain, but the soul is not suffering. The mind is not suffering. The mind is able to accept whatever that the body is going through. And the mind is able to, okay, let's carry on moving, doing what I have to do. Doesn't matter. You know, I'm able to sort of separate that pain. Okay, it has to do, okay, if I have to take medicine and I have to take medicine for this body, let me do it. But you know what? It's not going to beat my spirit. So that is what it is. Free from obstacle means that even though the challenges are coming, but you are not suffering because of the challenge. That is what it means having a long lifespan. And then Baba says that sometimes we can go into coma. Yes, you've heard that word coma that Baba said. Now look at the, um, on a medical level, on a, on a medical angle. Coma means the person is not really dead, but the person is lying still on the bed and the person is not responding. The person is listening. They're able to listen to um, what you are telling them, but they are not able to respond. So they are like vegetable. Yeah? And so why Baba is saying that the soul goes into a coma stage is that when I give in or when I give up, actually, when I give up uh, during challenges, when I give up, say, you know, I cannot do it. Um, some of us, we, uh, we, we give in to the weakness. And then after some time, we come back again, right? We, we bring ourselves, we have to bring ourselves up. Okay, let's try again. Start the efforts from scratch again. Let's start again. But there are some souls that they just give up. They feel... It's impossible. I, I don't think I can do. I keep failing. I don't think I can ever change. And so coma is like that state of mind where it's very disheartened, where Maya has just taken over and um, maybe the soul will recover. Maybe the soul don't. But it's that extreme feeling that's like being in a coma. And um, Baba said that even if they wake up, yes, some will wake up from the coma. But even if they wake up, it feels like as if they are not alive. You know? Because imagine, even medically, someone who has been in a coma uh, for a long time, who has been lying down on the bed, their muscles weaken up, right? And then when they become conscious, they have to go through a lot of physiotherapy, right? They have, to, they have to learn how to walk again. They have to learn to move their body because the body has not have had any movements. So it's not going to be easy life for them. They have to learn everything slowly, gradually, get back to their life to how they were before, to what they consider as, you know, how they have lived normally. So it takes time. So in that sense, uh, now let's let's use the same analogy in terms of emotions, in terms of just uh, the, the spiritual aspect of the soul. When the soul uh, feels as if it has hit rock bottom, when something happens, some situation happened, maybe I could have done a, a mistake, something that um, I feel very regretful that I feel very disappointed that I've done, or, or, or I heard somebody said something or did something to me that made me feel very disappointed. So these are all as if the soul is breaking down, right? And then I could be in that feeling, in that, in that feeling of whether it's disappointment or anger or irritation or frustration. So these are all as if it's like, it's putting the soul into coma because when I am in this feeling, there is no spirit. I could be even sitting in a Murli class. Nothing is going here. I could be sitting in front of Baba. Emptiness, complete emptiness. There's no connection. I could be talking to people, but like a lifeless person. 
no motivation, no feeling. There is like numbness. There is just frustration within me, disappointment. You know, that is like coma for the soul. No, no reaction that I'm giving. And so then for me, after some time, I recover. I, it will take a gradual time for me to come out of it, for me to recover and for me to do the things that I've um, that I've used to, that I that I used to do before, like meditation or listening to Merle, paying attention, or just uh, whatever that felt very uh, easy for me to do before. All of these are going to take time for me to come out of that state of numbness. This is why Baba says they could be living, but they are like dead. <laughs> So then that is why Baba says that let's not bring ourselves, allow ourselves to reach to such extent. You know, if I feel I am already uh, getting drained, if I feel I'm losing somewhere emotionally, especially if I feel somewhere um, I can see myself, okay, I feel I'm drowning, I'm going down. Okay, quickly ask for help. Seek Go to Baba, whatever that is needed. Let me just, um, if even if I'm dropping, but let me not hit rock bottom. Take measures, what needs to be done. So that, okay, you can then start going up, even if it is gradual. But once you feel you are somewhere so low, then it's gonna take a lot of time, okay? So that's the idea of when Baba says to be spiritually alive. And then Baba's talking about um, the tree. So this is a very beautiful analogy Baba has given about the tree. So if you see, the tree starts with the seed, right? You can't see the seed. Okay. <laughs> I just put a dot. Now you can see the seed, okay? So... So the tree starts with the seed. And Baba says, the seed is Baba, which Baba says, Baba is the seed. But Baba said, I am also a seed. This is me. And Baba says, I am master seed. Now, what does the physically, if you see, what does the seed do? From the seed, we have roots growing. And then after that, the trunk grows. And then after that, the tree. And then sooner, later, you get the fruits. Okay. Let me draw big. Okay. Here's the fruit. Right. And then what do you see in the fruit? Seed again. Seed. You see seed. seed. Again. Yeah. And the beauty is from one seed or one of one or two seed, a whole tree can grow, but you can never tell how many one seed, how many fruit it can give. Inside a fruit, you can count, right? Inside the fruit, you can count how many seeds are there. But one seed has given how many fruit you won't know, <laughs> right? Now, this seed, we get the seed from the fruit, and then this seed will then give birth to another tree. And then this will have a fruit, and then this will give birth to another tree, okay? So now Baba is talking, and then, okay, so this is the idea of the tree. And then we have this, the sun. So we have, yeah, we have the sun that is providing rays of sunlight. So what happens when the sun provides um, um, rays is that the, 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 the tree starts doing photosynthesis, right? Then that's how water and food is then um, spread to the whole tree. And Baba says the sun, is Baba says is um, sustenance. 
So the son is creator, sorry, creator. So Baba is creator, but Baba also said, I am also a creator. I am a master creator. So can you see, we are here and we are also here. I am a seed also, but I'm also a creator. Okay, so now Baba is saying, then who is this fruit? Okay, so this is this is fruit. The fruit is other souls and nature. And so what am I sending up the tree? Because usually water grows from here, right? Water, the, the roots will suck the water and then water is sent up. Now, what is this water that I'm sending? Is the water of good wishes. I'm sustaining the whole tree through good wishes and pure feelings. Okay. So I am my seed here, but I'm also sustaining the tree. And this is where Baba's talking about. So Baba says here, that seed, so Baba then said seed, hmm, right here, okay. Seed is for growth. And then after that, Baba said the sun is for sustenance. So growth means how many souls I'm serving, how many souls I'm giving hope, how many souls I am motivating. That is growth. And then once I serve a soul, I don't just let them hang loose, right? I also then sustain that soul. It's like children, example, all of you, those who have children. You don't just give birth, right? You have to sustain the soul. You have to sustain the children. You have to provide what they need, physical, whatever provision they need. But then you also need to be a good support system, a good guide for them. You don't just, you know, however you want to live, you just live. You don't abandon them. So you are giving birth to them and you are also responsible to sustain them. This is the same as Baba says in terms of souls. Giving birth to a soul means is making the soul to come to a certain realization about themselves, certain truth. That is like giving birth. It's like opening the third eye means to make the soul more aware. Sustenance means that, okay, once the soul has become aware, once the soul has realized, now show them the way, how to do it, how to live keep sustaining them, give them spiritual company. You know, uh, I remember Dali, uh, when I was, um, I think I was probably around like uh, 11, 12. I remember when, when I was in Madhupan, because this story came in my mind. When I was in Madhupan, um, in the courtyard in, uh, in, in Pandabhavan, so me and another, another girl, um, she was from Mauritius and uh, we were attending the international children's retreat. So she was also the same age as me. I think we were 12, I think. And uh, because we meet only once a year. So every year when we meet, there's so much stories we have that we share with each other. We share what happened in the year. We share what happened in school. So we get very excited. And every time when we meet, we just start talking. And uh, I remember that we were just talking out. I think maybe we could have been loud or we were just so excited. We were just young girls. We were talking. And uh, Dali Prakashmani, she was uh, passing by. And then Dali called, uh, you know, called us. And, uh, and uh, we were thinking like, oh, we made a mistake or something, you know. So we were like going a little nervous. We were going to Dali. And um, Dali, you know, she just, wanted to give a story so then uh, she gave a story and then I, she told uh, she told us that <clears throat> she told us that 
make her your uh, sakhi. In, she, she, she told me that inko, I'll tell you in Hindi what she said, that inko sakhi banana, saheli mat banana. Okay, you know, so now sakhi and saheli, if you translate in English, it just means friend. Uh, but in Hindi, the, the depth of friendship is quite different between these two words. And what she meant was, if it's a Saki, it's more like a companionship. And with Saki, you share spiritual, uh, you have spiritual chit chat. You talk about spiritual things, you uplift each other. But with Sahili, you gossip. You gossip about worldly things, you gossip about just anything, but anything that is ordinary. We're talking about anything that is ordinary. So that's why she said that, now I remember that what she said, that make everyone your sakhi, but don't make anyone your sahili. That means never a point of time <clears throat> that, I be, that I talk um, ordinary matters, meaning that I'm not saying that with every soul we have to talk about God. No, it's not that. But let me not be very casual in what I speak in terms of gossip, in terms of, say, making fun of something. These are very, very casual way of talking, which is what the more I start talking very casually like this, what happens is behavior becomes casual as well. And so that is why Baba says, no, you are not ordinary. Even though I could be living an ordinary life, yes, I have go, I have to go to job. Why like I could be taking care of the home. We're not talking about physical, ordinary tasks here. We're talking in terms of awareness here. We're talking about how we carry ourselves here. And so when I am very uh, I speak selected uh, topics to people and I'm very dignified in how I speak. This is how I'm presenting um, my own self-respect to others. Yeah. And so Baba says that when people see the way you are presenting yourself to them, the way you are leading your life, People, they may probably make fun of you, in front of you or behind your back. But you know what? Subtly, every soul are going to have their respect for you. And at the time of need, they're going to come to you. And they're going to come to you for help. Or they're going to come to you maybe for some advice. Because they know that you have that caliber. Caliber, what do you say caliber? Can somebody give another word for caliber? It's probably a tough word. Maybe let's say you have that um, ability to be a guide. Okay, you have that ability to be a guide. And so this is how Baba is saying the way I am presenting myself. And that comes from the way I'm thinking and perceiving myself. So everything is so interconnected with each other, right? And so Baba says, then why do I sustain others? This is how I sustain, right? So one is growth, one is sustenance. So this is the difference between seed and sun. And we are playing both roles, just like Papa. So this is the idea. Are we? Oh God, we are time. <laughs> I can't believe our time is there. One last, okay? The one last idea that blessing. So we have covered the three pointers. And now the last pointer to cover is the idea of blessings. What does Baba meant by that? So this then Baba said, Okay, so one is, you know, um, 
So one, the Baba said, the blessing, the hand of blessing that Baba is giving is not a physical hand, but it is Srimad. And so when I follow the ideas or the, the methods that Baba is showing, then I am bringing my life to the next level. I am, I am upgrading my life in terms of lifestyle, in terms of even the way I'm thinking, dressing, speaking, I'm upgrading my life to the next level, right? And when I do this, what happens is you will, uh, naturally, you will see how positive you are becoming, even without thinking you need to be positive or wanting to be positive, but you're naturally being positive. And so then what you're going to think about others, this has caused it will have a lot of compassion, comes it naturally without even you thinking that you need to be. So then what Baba says, that what I learned from Baba, then when I do it to others, I earn blessings. And even to me, okay? So from Baba, blessings I am receiving. And then these blessings, Whatever, uh, in terms of experience, in terms of attainments, in terms of knowledge, powers, then I am then sharing it with others. So I am then, so Baba gives me this, then I am sharing it with others. Then what happens? When I start sharing with others, then it will gonna come back to me again. So here I am receiving, I am also receiving here. Bounce back, everything bounce back to me. So then what happens? One is living my life with labor, trying to achieve everything through my own effort. But another, that's like, you know, walking up the staircase. When you're walking up the staircase, then we, the heart starts palpitating. I have to catch my breath. Sometimes I have to stop. And then after that, continue taking more steps. And then I have to stop again. So that's like taking stairs when I'm trying to achieve a goal, when I'm just working out on my own. But then there is a shortcut. The shortcut is the more I am able to serve others, the blessings that I receive from others. This is like taking an elevator. You step in. And without even you realizing you are going up, but not out of your own effort, like not out of your own labor. So blessing is like an elevator for the soul. It lifts the soul without the soul having to make too much labor. You know? And so this is the equation Baba is talking in terms of blessings. And lastly, Baba said that, so the idea, um, if you see, we have Baba's talking about in terms of Brahman, in terms of an angel, in terms of a deity, which is uh, being my complete divine self. The beauty of this present time is I can exist as a Brahman and as an angel. We're talking about state of mind here. Brahman and angel coexist together. And this only happens in confluence age. Because what is this idea of an angel? What, what does an angelic mind, an angelic consciousness does? Is that Baba says here, where is the angelic part? Okay. Is anyone able to see the angelic part? There was one sentence that Baba absolutely spoke about that. Okay, so here, a Brahmin life becomes an angelic life. And so Baba is talking, what does an angelic life mean? It means uh, when, that one is, so Baba talks about one is the, uh, karmic relationship. Another one is a bondage relationship. This karmic relationship is more like, so 
So karmic relationship, it doesn't have desire, but I am doing what is needed. In bondage, there is definitely desire, but then I also, because of this desire, I experience the result of it. So karma deed is different. Karma deed means that, yes, you don't have desire, but then um, you are just playing the role in terms for service, that, that's different. But Baba says an angel is one who is able to do everything, whatever role that they're born into in this world, whatever that they are doing, but they're not attaching a self motive behind what they are doing. They're not expecting a return and they're not expecting things in a particular pattern or a way that they want. They, are, they do and then they just detach. Let the result evolve, happen, show itself on its own, in its own natural process. But they're not going to sit and wait. I do move on. I do move on. I do move on. That is why Baba says a Brahmin and an angel can coexist right now. And then the more and more I am detached from needing something, detached from desire. Baba says that is in the future how when I'm living my best version, meaning that when I'm my divine self, Baba says then that life is definitely, there is no desires. Everything is fulfilled. And so that characteristic, that sanskara is what I'm invoking right now. And... Um, I guess this is the something I've covered everything. I think I've covered, yeah, I've covered everything. So this is the, the four pointers that we discussed earlier. It summarizes the whole morning. Okay. So now let me sit. Let's see if anyone has any questions or if you have no questions. Okay, Brother Tim, you won the revision. I will um, I will upload in the YouTube. Um, I even forgot what is the YouTube channel. Um, it is, I think, yeah, it's Los Angeles. Sister Harini, is it Los, Los Angeles? Angeles, Los Angeles? Brahma okay, perfect. Yes, Los Angeles, Brahma Kumaris. I will upload um, these um, recordings. I think there are quite a bit of recordings. Um, so I will upload them. And uh, just give me, say, two days. Um, and uh, you can, you'll be able to see um, these recordings at least latest, definitely by Wednesday. Okay. <clears throat> sure. So thank you for patiently being here. Do you put uni? Okay. So yeah, this Los Angeles um, Brahma Kumari's channel is, uh, it has a lot of um, BK related classes, recordings that talks about BK jargon that uses BK jargons. And then the other, um, the other Los Angeles um, um, YouTube channel, which is BK Los Angeles is purely uh, workshops that's for public. It doesn't have any BK language in it because they wouldn't understand. So that is why we have two YouTube channels. But Murli Revision will especially be uploaded in Los Angeles from Akmari's channel. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Om Thank Shanti. You. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, good night. Om Shanti, thank you. Om Shanti, good night. Om Shanti.